Welcome along to a video from The Noobs, i.e. me, for The Noobs. This channel is really for all those newbie go-karting people who are wanting to make a transition or going to start owner driver racing. Now, I have got very little mechanical background at all and I really am useless because I can't even tell the differences between a spanner and a screwdriver. So this channel is going to tell you about my experiences and what I've learned in a short space of time, albeit the hard way, and hopefully you'll pick those up and won't make the same mistakes I have made. So what are we doing? We have gone from arrive and drive go-karts with Joshua and Ashton. Josh is now 13 years old and we've got a Jack Dex cart behind me which is a Mini X30. Now it's an IAMI or AB. I don't even know what, how I'm supposed to say it, but that's what we've got. Uh, not a Rotax. Um, just went along with the guidance from Jack Dex and the guys at Wilt Mill Kart Club, Junior Kart Club, said in speaking to Jack, who is vast experienced and he's the man. So we're going along with what he says. Now, the reason why this cart is sitting behind us is because we've gone for the massive jump from arrive and drive 30 mile an hour go-karts into a machine that's capable of doing 70 miles an hour, which is a huge jump for Josh to do. Now. I'll tell you more about Josh's race and how it's getting along doing that and what we've experienced in another video. But this one just is like some simple, simple stuff. Like a lot of guys will probably laugh at this and I'll probably get shot down by quite a few. But if you don't know, you don't know. And trust me, I did not know. So one of the first things I want to point out is on the front of the nose cone, I lost my clamp. So I had one clamp holding my nose cone on. I also didn't realize that if you push the nose cone on all the way in, that actually gives an indication when you're racing to the uh, race directors to say that there's been contact and you will get a penalty. So I was fitting it wrong in the first place. Now I, I recognized that the nuts on the, the clamp were loose. I just thought that's the way it was supposed to be. So that's how I left it and I lost a clamp. So. Second-hand carts, which I accept, you're not going to get brand new, you're going to get issues with them, and you've got to learn some of these things as you go along. So that's the first thing I would say, is that have a look at your clamps, and, and don't lose a clamp, because the last thing you want is a nose cone coming off underneath. Chain guard. <laughs> I think everyone's got a story about chain guard. I was actually okay with the chain guard, until one session at Wilson Mill. Um, sorry to the guys on the quad bikes at Wilton Mill, because I managed to lose it twice in two sessions, which is a little bit embarrassing. Once is bad enough, but twice is the other. They have to be done up pretty damn tight, and it seems pretty simple, um, but I made it not. They have to be done up tight, but they also have to be sitting in properly, and how I thought they're going, just dropping down and slotting on, is not really the way I found the best way of doing it, is actually put it on, pushing it in, and then you'll see if it's sitting properly, then do it up tight, and I mean real tight because mine cartwheeled in the air at about 60 miles an hour at one point. Apologies to the driver, so follow me. So that's a lesson learnt on the chain guard. My battery failed, which I didn't know. It kind of made sense that the battery was failing because the cart wouldn't turn over. Um, I dispatched Jack uh, about this and uh, he told me that the battery was um, fairly new, so um, there shouldn't be too many problems and he offered to replace it for me. But I started checking everything else because I thought the battery was fine after I put it on trickle charge. So I actually bought myself a smart charger after I found out. And the way I found out actually is I had it on trickle charge. And I thought, do you know what? I'm just gonna give it a go, see what happens. After I charged it on trickle, it still wasn't working. Put the charger on, turned it on, pressed the button, clink, the starter motor clicked, battery. So I could have saved myself a lot of time by buying myself a smart charger, which is about 70, 80, 80 pounds, but, um, can work on go-karts and cars and motorhomes, um, a decent thing to have. So that's one tip, maybe look at getting a smart charger. My start button, that got loose and the connectors were dropping off an awful lot. Um, and then it started to just turn over as soon as I plugged it in. So quite useful to maybe have a spare one, they're only 15 quid. Um, once it starts, it starts, but either way, that's something I'll have in my box now as a spare, just in case I come across that problem again. Washing your go-kart down. Now this is my industry. I am involved in vehicle preparation uh, and detailing. So um, I'm pretty decent on the chemical side of things, but just useless with the spanner. 
So, uh, you will notice when you go karting that there will be people washing their carts down in the wet especially, straight out, they're washing them down, out the pressure washers, blasting, 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 and there's others that aren't. I understand that road taxis are actually used for skidoos, so they don't mind getting wet too much, whereas my I Amy, I Amy, whoever Amy is, don't like water too much, so it's not a good idea to just keep blasting them down, down with water. So what I did was, when you're cleaning anything, actually it's not the, the blasting of the pressure washer which does the washing for you, it's actually the chemical. I know some people use a lot, lot of different chemicals, but multi-purpose cleaners. This one is from Clean Easy. Uh, it's ideal um, for what you're doing. Get the grease and oil off your uh, around your chain guard. When you need to clean all that off, it's good for ideal for that. So if you spray that on and pre-spray it, turn the pressure washer right down on power. So really, you've just got a really just uh, quite wide fan is useful, so you're not blasting in one jet, and that will wash all the dirt away. The next mistake I made after washing my go-kart down was that I didn't dry it properly. So what I invested in is one of these. It's a DeWalt blower and many people use uh, a DeWalt impact driver or drill to get the wheels off and undo nuts on the go-kart. So the battery from that will indeed fit this and if you buy it on a casing only it works out about £80. I'm Believe you me, it's powerful. So you can blow all the water out from those nooks and crannies. So when you get back, you don't get rust onto your cart. Because I thought I got it dry, but there's still drops of water which can sit on it and cause damage to your cart. So once I realized I'd got corrosion on there, I had to do my best to try and get it off and protect it as best as possible so this wouldn't happen again. So I polished the metalwork and I then wiped it with panel wipe so I could apply a ceramic coating, which in this case was Car Pro Deluxe, which is made for metal and other surfaces. So that will now give it a lot of water repellency and protect against the elements once again. Knowing what I know now, I'm also going to use this. Now, it doesn't have to be this product, but this is a water-based silicon suspension dressing. So if you wash your cart down, you can spray that on the cart as it is wet, and it will then help lubricate and it will help repel the water and dry out so the cart is protected. Another way to look at it once your cart is looking great because these two things I've just mentioned are also gonna make your cart look really good. So when you turn up on the grid and your cart is looking the business, potentially you are gonna get a small edge on your competitor because everything looks right. What you also learn quickly in casting is that once you have finished racing is to drain all the fluids out of your cart. Now, it's a simple thing. But what I would suggest is, it's that you buy yourself a load of hose clips because I had no spare hose clips and I had a hose clip that was failing. And the last thing you want to do is, is to have to replace a new engine completely needlessly because there's no water or you've dumped the water out on the track. So go to someone at Screwfix and just buy yourself a load of hose clips. So I'm Matt Jones from J.A. Kart Racers. I will list you five more simple tips on the dialogue at the end of this video, which potentially could help you even more like it's helped us. Make sure you follow us on the socials, whether you want to laugh at us, learn from us, or just support us. So click the notifications button after subscribing us on YouTube and we are Instagram and the other socials too. So thanks for watching and hope to see you at the track soon. And don't forget, life, it's just a race.